welcome. Thank you for joining me. My name is Tony and I'm here with the Everyday Counts program. And we have an hour together for chair yoga. So, as always, making sure the chair you're on is stable, comfortable, and you've got space around you as you move around. You're not going to bump yourself. And then we come to a place where we're going to start our practice. So if the back of the chair feels really good support for you, then stay. If you want to, slide away from the back of the chair any amount. That way you are starting to strengthen through the center of your body, starting to hold your own spine up. And if you need to ease back and forth because that feels better in your body, please go ahead at any time. Feet are a comfortable distance for you, and that's going to look different for each and every one of us because we're all dealing with different things. Picking the toes up, even the balls of the feet. So you can imagine doing that, spreading the toes, flaring them wide, just as if you could spread your fingertips. And then set the balls of the feet down, and softly the toes float down too. And then notice how it is that you're sitting, deciding if you want to change something up just simply because it feels better for you, and go ahead and do that. Know that there is no wrong way of doing anything we're going to be doing today. Everything I guide you through is simply a suggestion. Notice what I'm guiding. Decide for yourself whether that suits you today and your body. And if it doesn't, if another movement or shape comes up that feels better for you, go ahead and do that. Or try the first variation of something. See if the breath can be contained within that shape and that movement. And if you feel comfortable, then go ahead and explore it. And if at any time it feels not right for you, then stop. You can always come back to where we start. So this rooting down through the feet. And if you want to, just push gently down into the earth. Noticing if you're pushing more into one leg than the other, more into the heels than the balls of the feet. Keep the toes nice and light. And just see if you can even that up in your own way. And then release the tension so the legs can soften. Wiggle from side to side in your seat. And if you wiggle from side to side, you may notice the base of your pelvis underneath you. And then evenly sit in the chair in your own way, where you're either leaning more to one side than the other than is necessary for you. Consider drawing the shoulders back somewhat, noticing how that feels. And maybe that feels really great for you and it feels like the spine is a little longer through the base of the skull than the tailbone. Or maybe coming forward more feels better. Play around and that's what all of this is about. Trying something on and then adjusting it for your own needs. As you arrange your upper body, roll the shoulders back and down, and then broaden across the collarbones just wide enough to feel like you have an open heart but with a neutral spine. Crown of the head is reaching up towards the sky, and we have this rooting down and your seat to rise up from there, and we get this broadness across the upper chest. When you're ready, keep the shape, take a big breath in. Keep the shape, soften the tension. And you can take another couple of breaths in your own way like that. Nice big, full breaths in and soft exhales out. And notice how that feels in your body. We spend so much of our time in the outside world using our senses. And I'm gonna invite you here to drop your gaze, lower your gaze, or even close your eyes if you feel stable and comfortable. And turn your awareness inwards. 
and notice how you're feeling today. In this moment, notice emotions that are present. Notice if there's a lot on your mind today. None of this is with judgment. All of it is just simply filtering through information that arises. Almost taking a mental note of everything. Like, huh, I seem to be concerned about this today. Interesting. You don't need to allow your awareness to be swept along with that story or narrative. And notice how your physical body is feeling. So go inside, start to be aware of the more subtle sensations in your body. And maybe some of the sensations are really loud, pay attention to those for sure. If there's places you need to take extra care of today, if there's tightness and tension in places. Also notice places of quietness, of calmness. And everything in between. Can you notice sensations without the story as to why? For example, my knee's hurting. Ah, because I did this yesterday, or because that is an injury, or that's the story. Can you just notice sensation? Can you notice your energy levels today? Again, without the story as to why I slept badly, I slept well, just noticing, being aware. If there is tension, tightness, or discomfort in your body, that simply through intuitive movement or a shift of your body, you feel like you can soften, go ahead and do that. That purposeful shift. And sometimes it's the smallest shift, which gives us the biggest dividends. start to notice our breath. Again, lowering the gaze, softening the gaze or closing the eyes if that's comfy and go inwards. Notice the inhale and the exhale. Softening the muscles of your face, across the back of your shoulders. As you pay attention to the rhythm of the inhale and exhale, and there's no wrong way to breathe here. I want you to imagine on either side of your chest and heart space, there are your lungs. Imagine the lungs, maybe just in the shape that you imagine lungs to be. And then see if you can breathe evenly on an inhale into both lungs. And exhale out of both lungs as if they were mirroring each other. And you might even notice as you do this that you just have a tendency, which you may not have even noticed before, to breathe more into one side first or the other. And see if we can create mirrors with each side, each lung breathing in and out. Starting to deepen the inhale, lengthen the exhale in your own way. Without any goal in mind. And again, even breaths, even breaths through both sides of your lungs. And you might be more aware of the breath not only in the front of your body, but also in the side and the back of your body too, as the lungs expand on the inhale and soften and retract on the exhale. With those deeper and longer breaths, 
start to create more smoothness in the breath all the way at the top of the inhale, all the way to the bottom of the exhale with that mirrored breath going, filling up the lungs evenly on the inhale and the exhale. So we have a smoother breath coming in and out. And from here, as we pay attention to the breath, often some tightness and tension creeps into our body. So if that is the case, soften again and soften any efforting of the breath. So if you're pushing the breath just a little bit too much that it doesn't feel sustainable or easy. There should be a quality of ease to that breath, that mirrored breath. As your lungs breathe in and out together. And often this breath just gives us more awareness to the breath coming in and out. So we have this longer, smoother, softer breath, but even breaths. And that's the breath that we will keep for the rest of the practice. Any time you can come back to this breath and find it in different shapes. If at all you're holding the breath as we go through movement, come back to stillness, find the breath again, and then move from there. And if this breath is not your favorite breath and you have a different breath that you prefer, go ahead. Again, you're listening to me a little bit of the time and most of the time you're listening but then deciding for yourself if it feels good for you or not. So we root down through the feet and seat and rise from there. Broaden the collarbones, soften the shoulders down. We've got those even breaths coming in and out with the very tip of your nose. We're going to start to create circles in the air. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Keeping the eyes soft or closed if you like. That way we get an internal experience of the movement, how it feels for us. That movement might naturally start to get a little bigger, slower, smaller, or stay just the same. Notice sensations, and if there's anything you need to adjust to it for it to feel better for you. The end of the next exhale, or when you're ready, we'll pause and take those circles around in the opposite direction. Start small. Even breaths through both sides. Allow the breath to guide the movement. Another couple of breaths here. You can always rest. And then at the end of the exhale, we come back to center, rooting to rise, even breaths, right arm dangles down. And from the right shoulder, we're going to start to circle, inhaling up, exhaling down, just getting that rotation and movement through the shoulder, nice and soft to start with, even breaths. Take that round in the opposite direction when you're ready. Notice if the movement changes the breath, if you can accommodate the breath for the movement and so forth. Last one. And then when you're ready, I'm going to take that right arm up in a cactus or a T, and you can stay here, palms stretched wide, fingertips reaching, or take the fingertips on or towards the right shoulder. Now the elbow can be down or up towards shoulder height, 
but with the very tip of your elbow is starting to create circles in the air. With your breath. So probably slower than most of us think. Feel into it, adjust the movement to your body. And we want as fluid of movement as possible. Option to stay here with the heart facing forward or isolating right away through the shoulder. Option to start to bring some upper body movement, a little gentle twist in and out as the shoulder naturally comes forward and back. Maybe the gaze is inwards, eyes soft or closed, or maybe you can take the gaze from side to side. You can even look over that right shoulder. Coming back to stillness through the torso. Notice which direction you're going in. Pause and then take that round in the opposite direction. And if you need some breaths in between, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Keeping the torso facing forward or starting to bring some gentle upper body movement into that. Maybe the gaze comes with you, taking that into the neck as well. Or maybe the gaze stays inward. Allow the movement to be as fluid as possible. And then on the end of the exhale, we'll pause and take that hand down. Give it a little wiggle and then we're gonna turn the palm forward. Imagine as you turn the palm forward, that collarbone opening out and the right shoulder blade snuggling towards the spine behind you. Imagine that right palm now on a window or a plane of glass in front of the palm. So imagine you could kind of stick it there. It can be slightly in front of your body. It depends on the uh, range of motion in your shoulder. Otherwise, at the side. As if you had a window there or a plane of glass, you had a rag in your hand, we're going to do some shoulder scrubbing. So from here, we're moving through the entire shoulder, keeping the arm as it is, nice and soft. And then we're starting to circle, inhaling up and in, exhaling, the shoulder comes out and round and down. So that left palm of mine is kind of mirroring the shoulder blade on the right side. And it might be an awkward movement. Notice where you feel this. Any tightness and tension. Maybe you make the movement a little smaller. Maybe you take rests in between, doing every other one or every second one. And then when you're ready, We'll pause and take that round in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So shoulder scrubbing again, that um, polishing of that imaginary window right in front of you. And it's not coming from the elbow, it's coming from the shoulder. So the entire arm is still and the movement is coming from that shoulder blade. Mm -hmm. Two more, all resting. Nicely done. And then give that arm a little bit of a waggle, a little bit of intuitive movement to release tension. And we're coming to the other side, left hand dangles down. Steady the breath, those even breaths through both sides of your lungs and circling through the left shoulder. Inhaling and exhaling. Again, go inwards. Notice how, where you feel this, how you experience it in your body. If bigger movements or smaller movements or a rest in between would serve you. And then we'll pause when you're ready and go around in the opposite direction. Mm 
mindful of that full movement. And at the end of the exhale, we'll pause. And then left arm comes up. Again, elbow down, elbow lifted, palms spread wide towards the front or fingertips resting on or towards that left shoulder. And we're circling. Torso is facing forward, so it's rooting to rise. We've got length through the upper body. Crown of the head is reaching up and that movement is isolated through the shoulder. As if with that elbow you're creating a circle. And due to whatever's going on in your body, maybe the circle doesn't look anything like a circle, but what we want is the fluidity. Option to stay here, option to bring a natural, gentle movement through the upper body as the shoulders naturally come forward and back, maybe that gaze comes over that left shoulder and over towards the right, depending on what feels good for you. Another two, notice which direction you're going in. The end of the exhale, we'll pause, come back to the torso at the beginning, uh, facing forward, and then we'll circle in the opposite direction. And if you want to rest in between, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Steady and smooth, as best as you can. And then that gentle movement through the upper torso, if that feels good to you. Mm -hmm. Another two resting if you prefer, and then we're coming all the way back to center, allowing that left hand to come down, any intuitive movements, and then we're taking that palm forward, noticing all the joints in that arm, spreading the palms wide, and imagining you're just sending that palm just a little forward to um, rest on that imaginary window. From here, the movement is not through the joints here, the elbows, the wrists, the hands. What it is, is we're keeping that arm in stillness and the movement is coming from that shoulder. So the inhale, we draw in towards the body and up towards the ear, the exhale, down and round. Notice if your spine is moving along with you and see if you can isolate through the shoulder. The movement can be big or small. Imagine circles that you're creating with that palm on that imaginary plane of glass. There's a whole lot of shoulder movement and shoulder blade circling. On that inhale, the shoulder blade draws in towards the spine. On the exhale, it comes around and down. And then we'll rest and then take that round in the opposite direction. And one direction may be a little more natural to you than the other. Notice how you experience this. Take rests when you need to. Even breaths through the torso, through the lungs, both sides for another two. And then allow those arms to dangle, any intuitive movements, and we're coming back to center. For those of you who are sitting towards the back of your chair, you could consider sliding forward just a little bit, as long as you feel stable. That way you've got a little bit more space as we explore cat and cow. Feet are rooted. Seat rooting down, we lift from there and broaden. And you might have a little bit more awareness now through the shoulders, through those shoulder blades as they settle um, towards the spine just a little as the collarbones open. On the inhale, the heels of the hands draw back towards the pelvis as the heart opens, elbows come back behind you. And on the exhale, fingertips slide towards or on the knees as you scoop out the belly, sending the back of the ribs towards the back of the chair. 
Now imagine those shoulder blades. On the inhale, the shoulder blades are sliding towards each other as you open up through the chest. They might even feel like they're kissing behind you. And on the exhale, as you slide the fingertips forward and scoop out the belly, the shoulder blades are sliding away and to the side. Inhaling and exhaling. Allow that to happen very purposefully. So there's a squeeze, gentle squeeze of the shoulder blades on the inhale, and you'll feel this openness, usually through the chest, the upper shoulders. And of course, you can lift the chin a little on the inhale. On the exhale, we get the same sensation across the back of the shoulders, maybe the back of the ribs, lower back. Inhale is the front body expanding. Exhale is the back body expanding. I'd like you to take your awareness right between the shoulder blades. We've got a group of muscles there called the rhomboids. And a lot of the time, those rhomboids are pretty tight or they don't fire because we overuse the trapezius muscles. Trapezius muscles are, keep going, um, they're kind of from the base of your skull here. Imagine a shape of a manta ray coming just kind of below the shoulders and wrapping underneath and then coming down to a point. So it's kind of like a manta ray spread across your back and those tend to get really tight, especially up by the neck and shoulders. And we overuse those, and a lot of the time the rhomboids are um, just hanging out as the trapezius muscles do a lot of the work for us. So on that inhale, there's an awareness too between the shoulder blades as we draw them in. And on the exhale, imagine those rhomboids stretching apart as the shoulder blades come towards the side of your body. Mm -hmm. And again, that natural lifting of the chin on the inhale. But as you lift, lengthen through the back of the neck so it's not just compression there. Exhaling, chin down towards the chest. If you want to bring the arms into it, we're going to take the hands in soft, gentle fists. Bend at the elbows, elbows in between the, uh, towards the ribs. On the inhale, we're going to open up the um, arms. And again, that'll, and that'll help with squeezing towards the, um, the center line of the body. And on the exhale, knuckles come towards each other as if you get this wide body. Knuckles can come in and even the elbows come forward as those knuckles come towards the heart. Inhaling, elbows down by the ribs. And on the exhaling, they flare as you cave in through the front body. Only as much as feels comfortable for you, of course. And we have another three breaths here. Keep it steady and smooth. Last one. center, rolling through the shoulders, any intuitive movements you want to, please go ahead. From here, arms dangle down, collarbones broaden, and we have that awareness to um, the upper body. Imagine there's a wall behind you that you could just rest your shoulder blades on in the back of your skull, so there's a slight tucking of the chin. This is the inhale on the exhale. I'm going to reach down towards the um, floor with the right fingertips. Inhaling up and exhaling over to the left. Even breaths here. And then as you come to inhale up, filling up both sides, exhaling, you might consider the collapsing of or shortening of um, one side of the lungs as you fill it up evenly on the inhale and then the opposite side gets a little smaller as you compress. Inhaling, filling up, exhaling. It's almost like bellows compressing on one side. 
Mm-hmm. Keep those collarbones nice and wide, as wide as are comfortable for you. And we'll take two more either side. Chin is in towards the chest. Mm-hmm. And then when you're ready, we're coming all the way back up to center, even out the breaths, inhaling and exhaling as the air leaves evenly, as evenly as you can manage through both sides of your torso. From here, hands come towards the legs. We're gonna take those feet a little wider. Maybe you wanna come forward on your chair for less support. Maybe in this position, you wanna come back, use the back of the chair for support if that feels better for you. Rooting down once more, feet in seat to rise from there. Hands resting. And then from there, we're rolling through the mid ribs. Inhaling and exhaling, I highly recommend, especially in this movement, as it is an intuitive, fluid as we can make it movement, soften your gaze, close your eyes, and allow this movement to gently unfold in your body. There's no wrong way of doing this. Get your shoulders, your head, your neck, your hips involved. If you need to adjust your foundation at any point, go ahead. And if it feels better to hold on to the chair or the arms of the chair, if you have them, please do that. Noticing not only the loud places that feel a bit challenging in your body, but notice the ease. Notice the places in your body that feel comfortable. And with the exhale, we'll pause and take it around in the opposite direction. Nice and slow and steady. Smoothing it out. Keep it going or resting for another three. And then we'll come back to center at the end of the next exhale. Rooting down to rise up from there and bringing the feet back into center. Big breath in. Exhale it out. Another couple of breaths there. Lower your gaze, close your eyes, and check in with your body. Notice how it's feeling in this moment, sensations, energy levels, and anything either subtle or big that may have shifted or changed after a little bit of breath and movement from when we checked in at the beginning with our mind, our emotions, our physical body, and our breath. You can stay there for as long as you like. Otherwise, I'm going to meet you down on the floor, or if you have a place close by, like your bed, that you prefer to practice the last half on, and I'll meet you on your back, knees to the sky, feet to the floor, with everything gathered around you that you need for relaxation right at the end. And if you're feeling like this is enough today and I'm done, please listen to that and take some time to rest so you can integrate the movement and breath on a cellular level before you move into your day. And for those of you who want to, I will see you down on the floor. Hello, hello. So here we are on the floor and gathering everything you need for relaxation close by, we're gonna come down onto our back if you're not already there. Take as much preparation as you need to get there. 
making sure that your supported, if for example, your head resting back on your mat feels um, a little tight through the throat and the breath is a little choppy, then a folded blanket or a towel supporting and rising your head can help. There's not a wrong way to do this. So if you need more support, please take it. If you need extra softness underneath you, accommodate everything I'm doing for your own body. Yoga is not an endurance sport. So we're not here to be uncomfortable and just make it to the end of class. We really have that opportunity if we give ourselves permission to take care of our needs. So notice if you are doing that, and I do encourage it. Knees to the sky, feet to the floor. And then if it feels okay for you, I always like to pick up my pelvis and just shift my hips a little closer to my heels. That way we get that length through the torso. Feet are a comfortable distance and a comfortable distance from your seat. And that's gonna look very different for each of us, depending on the length of our bones and how our body moves. So again, there's no wrong way. Pick up those toes, maybe even the balls of the feet, stretch through the soles of the feet as if you were waking up the soles of your feet for the first time. And then send the balls of the feet down towards the earth, press evenly through the balls of the feet and the heels, and then let the toes settle softly down. So we're connected down to that foundation of our feet. Notice the back of the pelvis, the back body where it's connected. You could send the shoulder blades slightly towards each other just to open up through the collarbones, just as if we did when we were um, sitting. And then chin up towards the chest will lengthen the back of the neck. Hands resting on the front of the pelvis. Take some steady breaths evenly through both lungs. And because gravity is working in a different way for us here, maybe you'll find this easier to notice that filling and emptying of the lungs as evenly as possible. Or maybe this is more challenging for you here. Just do your best. Tune in, turn inwards. And you can just simply stay here resting. Or on the inhale, imagine as if you had a thread from your belly button and I was lifting it up towards the sky. So we're opening up through the front body, not unlike cat and cow. And then on the exhale, as if your belly button dropped down towards the center of the earth and we scoop out the belly, that's the exhale. Inhale, we have that extension. And exhale, the flexion of the spine. You can use your feet here on the inhale. Imagine dragging the heels back towards your seat. And on the exhale, pushing the feet into the earth. And with your hands on the front of the pelvis, you might notice the pelvic tilts here. Inhaling and exhaling, keeping the movement flowing through the entire breath. And on that exhale, as the belly draws down towards the earth, the diaphragm pushes up and the air leaves evenly through both lungs as evenly as possible. And on that inhale, as we create space in the front body, we can fill. Great place to be right here. If you wanna add on, hands can rest down either side of your hips, palms facing down. And inhaling, lifting through the belly. On the exhale, push into the feet and maybe push so much that the tailbone tucks up towards the sky and the pelvis lifts a little. And still that inhale, the top of the inhale, the belly lifts, the pelvis is back on the earth. So we're starting to peel the spine one vertebrae at a time off the mat.
Inhaling and exhaling. Great place to be right here. And we're not concerned about the height of the movement here. What we want is the smoothness of the movement. Option to stay here. Great place to be, lifting and lowering, peeling up and down. If you want to add on, the next time you lift the hips, option to take the arms up and overhead towards the sky, maybe even back behind you, and then taking the hips all the way back down. And there's a peeling up and down through the body. Noticing how that feels. Still at the top of that inhale, we're getting that openness through the spine. The arms can be as far as close away, as close to the body as feels good for you. And allow the breath to move evenly through the movement. And we've got another three. And again, not concerned about the height. Notice if you're pushing through both feet evenly, if you're pushing through both sides of the torso, the shoulders. If your pelvis is coming down evenly or you're favoring one side. And then at the end of the next inhale, we're coming back to center, hands resting on the belly. And take some nice even breaths here. Again, awareness to the breath coming in and out through the lungs. From here, we're gonna draw that right knee in towards you, get that foot a little flex, and we're gonna curl that um, thigh in towards your ribs or your belly. Excellent place to stay there. Option, if it feels okay for you, is to send that left leg long, heel to the floor. In that case, both feet are flexed. Spread the toes nice and wide. From here, on the inhale, allow the lungs to expand and the Right thigh comes away from the belly as the belly expands. And on the exhale, you're going to push that air out through the right side as you draw in the right knee in towards your chest. Any amount as you push that left foot away. So we're using the right thigh to assist the breath from leaving through that right side. With that assistance, notice if you can still keep an even breath, that mirror through not only the right side, but the left side. So even without the assistance of the thigh coming in towards your chest, the breath is even in and out. Option to stay here. Option to draw the knee in towards the chest, the chest in towards the knee with those right hands either interlaced, if you can take it under the knee on the front of the shin, excellent place to stay right there. This is the inhale, on the exhale, curling the nose in towards the knee and bringing the nose towards the knee and inhaling back down. This is only happening if you've got no head and neck issues going on, just like we did with the spine. It is appealing up and down. We're not concerned about the height of it. Curling in. So the chin starts in towards the chest as we peel the back of the head off. Keep the collarbones nice and wide. So notice if you're shrugging the shoulders up towards the ceiling, keep those collarbones nice and wide. 
We've got another two to go. And then the next time the head comes back down, we'll leave it there. Release the pressure on the right shin or thigh. Bend the left knee, foot to the floor, and shift the hips to the right. Once again, extend that left leg. Right arm comes in a cactus or a T next to you, shoulder height. And then the left hand assists the right leg towards the left, so we get a deep twist. Right shoulder is grounded, and you can play with how close that knee is to you or how far away it is, and that's going to change how it feels in your body. You can pulse. You can come in and out, or you can stay in stillness. If the right shoulder is grounded, take a gaze over the right shoulder. And of course, use any props or support you might need under that right shin, knee, ankle. If there's another twist you prefer to take, please do. And even in this twist, can you breathe evenly through both lungs as best as you can? Breathing in so full that the belly lifts on the inhale as it expands and softens on the exhale. A couple more breaths just like that. Last one. And when you're ready, the gaze comes to center, the knee comes to center. Right foot down, left foot down, knees to the sky, and we shift our hips back to center. Left knee draws in when you're ready, making any adjustments that you need to. Option to stay here, option to extend that right leg along the floor. Both feet are flexed if that happens, if that's uncomfortable for you in any way, and you're keeping that right foot to the floor, knee to the sky. Even breaths through both lungs. And then on the inhale, the belly expands, the knee draws away from the chest a little. And on the exhale, we're drawing the thigh in towards the rib cage, the belly on that left side to assist the air out. Keep the collarbones broad so the shoulder blades are drawn softly underneath you, so we have that slight opening through the chest. And notice this manual kind of bellows breath as we let the air come in and then push it out. And even with that assistance now, can you create that even breath through both lungs? even with that assistance on the left side. And so now we're creating that same, um, that same breath that the left leg is assisting us, but we're using the muscles of the right side of the torso. Another couple of breaths here using as much or as little pressure as feels good for you. Rest whenever you need to. Of course, if this is not for you, then another move. Last breath here. Keep that even breath going as you release. Draw as much pressure as you want into the thigh, back of the knee, front of the shin, and then draw the shoulders down towards the earth. Any head injuries, neck injuries, any um, super tightness in the upper shoulders, then you're staying here and breathing. If you want to add on, just like you did with the hips curling up through the spine, this is the inhale, the crown of the head um, is lengthening across your mat. On the exhale, tuck the chin in towards the chest and the nose comes in towards the knee. You can assist the knee towards the nose. Inhaling back down. This can be as much or as little movement as you like. Maybe you draw so much that the sh shoulders lift off the earth, maybe the shoulder blades lift. 
keep the breath even and you've got three more on the inhale there's always the length and the exhale there's that curling in got one more mm -hmm. the head comes back down so that right leg is extended the foot comes to the floor again as you bend the knee and we shift the hips to the left re-extend that right leg if it wasn't there before right hand to the left knee as drawing it across to the right left arm is at shoulder height and a cactus or a T so we ground through the left shoulder any props you need here please go ahead gaze can come over to the left shoulder towards the left and we're breathing even in this twist here can you breathe evenly through both lungs And even though you might think of this as just breath work and kind of what is the point, the point of breath work is that you're giving messages to your central nervous system. The slower and steadier and even more even the breath is, the nervous system settles down and feels like everything is safe and comfortable. The body will naturally open up in that state instead of contracting. It'll contract when it feels unsafe. And you're also um, really strengthening through the muscles in your torso and core, helping the breath coming in and out. In yogic law, it also talks about how steady, consistent breath work massages the inner organs, releases caught um, tension and tightness around it and energy releasing energy through the body so the body can process it And then when you're ready, you can stay here for as long as you like where the gaze comes back to center. Left knee comes back to center, foot to the floor. Right knee joins it and then we even up through the pelvis. Any last sets of movements here you want to finish up your practice. Maybe you curl those knees in, maybe you send the feet and um, hands towards the ceiling, rotating. Maybe there's another move that you want to take. Take the next few breaths in whatever movement or stillness you want and make your way towards relaxation. And that can be on your side, on your back, spread out like a starfish, or you can um, cover yourself under a blanket, anything that seems really good to you here. As I come to a seat, just simply to guide you, making small and big adjustments towards comfort. So you might turn inwards and notice what is comfort to me here? A lot of the times um, the body feels safest and most comfortable when it's most supported. So if you're finding as you tune into your body, there's um, a lot of space between you and the earth underneath you or the support underneath you, if you can fill in those gaps so the body feels a little more supported, you might want to check that out and notice how that feels or not. And again, you're listening to me a little bit at the time, but most of the time intuitively, you can tell what your body needs. And then we settle in and settle down. When you're ready, simply turn your awareness outwards and notice the space around you. You might even imagine the shape of the room, the furniture, the windows, the doors. And then imagine that support underneath you. Tune into it. Feel that support in your body. Take a big, beautiful breath in. And exhale, let the body sit into that support. Take another few breaths here to simply allow that to happen. And 
And then as that starts to happen, start to let the breath go. So it comes back to effortless breath. As you allow your body to rest in comfort as best as you can. Imagine the lungs inside your torso and with that soft breath, that even breath. And without any effort, start to imagine the lungs filling with air on the inhale and softening and letting go on the exhale without any forcing, without changing anything. Just notice the air coming in and out, nourishing your body, giving your cells what they need. Imagine all the breaths you've taken from that first breath when you were first brought into the world. All the way up to this moment. All the experiences you ever had. All the times you were asleep. through all the amazingness of your life, through the challenging parts, but also through the joy, this breath coming in and out through your body, nourishing your cells, and the wonder of that. Most of the time, we don't notice. But the breath is one of the quickest ways that we can change how we feel. It is like the super highway to our central nervous system. And as we not in this moment, the breath is nice and easy, but when we are conscious of the breath and change the breath to be a little softer, a little deeper, a little smoother, we can override a lot in our bodies to create less anxiety, the breath can change pain and how we experience pain. It can change how the systems in our body work, it can change our sleep. The breath can change almost every aspect about us. simply come in and out. You may even imagine your cells breathing with you on the inhale. You can imagine, sense, or feel into every cell expanding, a little softness on every exhale. And your body pulses with your natural easy breath. Stay here for as long as you like, breathing, sensing into that breath and the wonder of it all. Take a moment to thank your body for this breath. Still there, coming and going. 
most of the time, we're not even aware of it. Take a little, little deeper breath in. Exhale like a soft sigh. And then take another few breaths like that in your own way. Big breath in, sigh, softening, exhaling out. And allow those breaths to guide gentle movement, fingers and toes, ankles and wrists, maybe gliding your head slowly from side to side. And allow that breath to guide intuitive, bigger movements. Maybe you want to stretch wide or long overhead. Maybe you want to curl in, draw your knees in one at a time or both together. Maybe you want a windshield wipe of those knees from side to side. What feels good to you? And over the next few breaths, bringing yourself to where you want to finish your practice, and maybe that's just resting as you are. Slowly making your way up, if that's where you're going. And we take a seat and settle in and settle down. Hands in a gesture of closing whatever that means to you. Root to rise, breathe in. Exhale, chin softly softens, drops towards your chin, only towards your heart. And thank yourself for being here. Thank your breath. Thank this moment. I thank you for your practice, for your breath, for your awareness and attention. Namaste.